for once, the Razorback football team is the quiet ones. We're going to talk about that as well as dive into Arkansas and Mississippi State basketball in Bud Walton Arena tomorrow and head into the weekend with some nonsense. It's all coming up on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 The Buzz. Dot com. Hope everybody is having a wonderful Friday as we head into the weekend, and hopefully you're staying warm, especially if you're in the state of Arkansas and surrounding areas. Still a lot of snow, still a lot of ice out there, so be sure to be careful while you're out there traveling. But still, uh, it's been a great week, and obviously the podcast is continuing to to grow at a rapid rate. And again, thank you all for, for being a part of it and subscribing on YouTube. It's just been awesome and really doing some big things and going to continue to do some big things here in the 2022 year. And it's amazing that we're already a month through it. So it's just been, it's been really great. And I appreciate everybody that's been on board with it as well. Uh, you know, there's not really a whole lot to talk about from the Arkansas side of things when other than, you know, Razorback basketball taking on Mississippi state tomorrow. We know Razorback baseball here in the coming weeks will be starting up, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, Arkansas in football hasn't, really uh had anything go on at least crazy you know within uh, since the coaching hires of deke adams and dominique bowman uh it's kind of been the newest thing we haven't heard from coach Pittman or heard from those coaches just yet so it's kind of just been quiet on the on the football side of things and considering how this week has gone i would say that arkansas being the most quiet program in the SEC, or specifically the SEC West right now, is a great thing. Is a very, very great thing. And if you haven't been really following along with what's been going on in other schools with the SEC West, I'll try to do this timeline for you. Uh, just for, And it's not every school, but just here's a breakdown of what happened this week. So on Monday, Auburn had their newest OC that had been there for like six weeks, I think, resign. Completely resigned. Derek Mason left their defense coordinator for Oklahoma State. Craziness going on there at Auburn. Nobody really knows what's going on. And then on Tuesday, Lane Kiffin is the one he called out uh, Jimbo Fisher for the whole like recruiting stuff and saying he was, you know, there was all this big budget that they had and saying, ah, it's, you know, it's kind of an unfair advantage. They have all this stuff. And then Wednesday, Nick Saban fires a shot at Jimbo, too, talking about we never had this going on when, you know, when I was in, so like before this happened, this is getting out of control, it's out of hand. But then Jimbo Fisher fires back at Nick Saban and Lane Kiffin in a very fired up, very angry uh, response that, I mean, he was he was just making the rounds on all media. Like he was really uh, fired up and angry and, you know, probably had a right to be or at least a right to stand up for his program. And then yesterday... It started really getting hot and heavy towards the end of the day into the night that Brian Harson at Auburn, his future was in jeopardy, his immediate future in jeopardy with the Tigers. Now, this was originally reported by On3 Sports, I saw, that there could be some problems. I know Brandon Marcello jumped in on it as well. Uh, there's nothing really set in stone as far as whether he's going to be fired or, or what. But when you start getting people of note and people like that and people who know a lot about the Auburn football program saying, hey, there's some smoke to this fire, you start really believing it. And on top of that, of course, Alabama's offensive coordinator, Pete Golding, or defense, yeah, defense coordinator, Pete Golding, getting a DUI. I can't forget that. So there's been a lot of stuff going on with, uh, with the uh, SEC West and some of the drama that's been happening on the field and sometimes off the field so far this week. And between the, the coaches and the and the crazy stories going on, there lies Arkansas. Now, you'll be like saying, well, you only mentioned Ole Miss and AM and Auburn and Alabama. I mean, there's not really any drama going on with LSU. Well, a little bit because they were they had a pretty good recruiting class, but they lost out on some recruits in the whole Brian Kelly dancing awkwardly video. It's kind of a bad look and made it pretty cringy. And then Mississippi State, what about them? Well, they have Mike Leach and they're always going to be, uh, you know, <laughs> looked at in certain ways and, you know, made fun in certain ways too. But the point is, it's like, I'm not saying Arkansas is the only school that's been quiet. 
but they have been quiet. They haven't had any, knock on wood, any major issues with people like having firings or leaving or, you know, mass exodus or huge drama going on, whatever it may be. It's been actually quiet. And since Sam Pittman has taken over as a head coach at Arkansas, everything has been quiet, comparatively speaking, of course. You know, for a time period, there were so many different like things being made with the Chad Morris and the Brett Bielma era of coaches saying stupid stuff, dumb stuff, players leaving, accidents happening, bad sound bites, whatever it was. It was just it was kind of a constant thing. And it wasn't just an Arkansas thing. It was a lot of teams in the SEC that would have the same problem. They'd have jokes being made or, uh, you know, dumb, bad headlines, players getting arrested and involved in bad things, whatever it is. Like, it's it constantly goes on in college football. And in the SEC West, they're no stranger to it, uh, especially with how competitive it is, highly competitive it is in this division. But there lies Arkansas, a team that has had a great season this past year and a great off season done a really good job in the transfer portal done a pretty good job in recruiting um you know coaches have left but no none of the coordinators left but you brought in some guys that you feel pretty good about it's like there's just a lot of things going on where you're feeling pretty good and things are quiet but not because you're not making noise but just because you're just tooting right along doing what you're supposed to be doing putting the things together you're supposed to be putting things together with i mean it's just nice it's nice to have that and so that's what I really appreciate about Sam Pittman is that as long as he's the head coach, you're not going to have nonsense go on. You're not going to have to worry about, you know, Sam Pittman being dancing in a cringy video. You know, you're not going to have to worry about uh, coaches leaving for lesser programs or whatnot and rumors swirling about you as a head coach getting with uh, a, a, a one of your employees or anything like that. It's like you're not going to have to worry about any of that stuff. And I saw somebody tweet it out the other day, and it was a college football analyst, expert, blue check, you know, so you know they're important. Uh, but I saw him tweet out something that I thought was pretty funny. He was like, is Arkansas the most normal, common, you know, program right now in the SEC West? Are they, are they the ones that just fine, that just doing it right and making it work? Of course, you know, there are programs that are better, but drama-wise, yeah. They are right now, for sure. They are. And you know, usually people always talk about wanting to be in the spotlight for any reason. You know, there's no such thing as bad press, as they all say. You know, I think that's why Lane Kiffin behaves and does the things he does and trolls the way he trolls is not because he believes it, but because he thinks that even in negative ways, he'll still be he wants to be in the spotlight. He wants to be talked about. I mean, I mean, Lane Kiffin could put up a tweet about him farting and then college football experts are going to tweet, quote tweet and just say, oh, this guy just gets it. <laughs> Lane Kiffin, you scoundrel. Yeah, this is what it's all about. And, uh, and it just it's it's really annoying. So he gets it, though, as far as always being talked about. And there are coaches that are like that. You know, Eli Drinkwitz has kind of become that coach where he wants to be talked about, but it comes off as so like lame. And like he, he's a really lame guy and a really lame coach. And his behavior is really lame, too. So you have coaches that are just that way. And then you have coaches that just let the, the play do their talking. Like Jimbo Fisher, I have never thought about as being a guy who's been just wanting to talk about himself and, you know, pumping himself up and doing funny things or anything. He's just he doesn't have on social media. He's just going out there and trying to coach. And same thing with Nick Saban, of course, like both of those guys kind of cut from the same cloth, but they just want to go out there. They just want to coach football. And they let the winning speak for themselves or their win speaks for themselves or whatever it may be. So you have coaches that are that way too. And then you have coaches that are kind of just boring, kind of there, whatever. I guess I should have thrown Mike Leach into the Lane Kiff and Eli Drinkwitz uh, place as well. But then you have coaches that are just kind of boring and not really special, not really great at winning, not really bad at anything. It's just kind of like they're there, you know? No one's going to talk about how great they are, but no one's going to talk about how bad they are. They're just kind of there in the limelight or just kind of not there in the limelight, but hanging out like, you know, guys like Mark Stoops or uh, guys like Shane Beamer, you know, coaches like that, where it's like they're not bad, but they're not great, but they're just kind of hanging out. And that's where it's like with Sam Pittman. I think everybody has an, is openly rooting for Sam Pittman to be successful. I think everyone likes Sam Pittman. 
And I think everyone understands and appreciates what he's been trying to do and what he has been doing at Arkansas and getting this program turned around. So being quiet is a great thing, especially when you, you're winning. And when usually we see in programs, if things start getting too good, that's when it all comes crashing down. Razorback fans, you know that more than anybody. So let's hope that this keeps going where you don't have to worry about any other issues. But the fact is, is that Arkansas and Sam Pittman are doing a great job of keeping this thing going without having any sort of negative publicity coming their way. That's a great thing. That's a special thing. That's something you can build upon. And it's all about being on that solid foundation, which Sam Pittman definitely has here at Arkansas. Bet online as you cover this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues to march through the playoffs right to the big game here in the next couple of weeks. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, new and news this season. And it's not just about football. BetOnline has an up-to-minute info on pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live, real-time updates on current games. Do not wait to take advantage of this amazing offer for the 2022 season. Head over to BetOnline.net where the game starts. We're also brought to you by Get Upside. You know that incredible app that I've been telling you about to where if you're going to be putting gas in your vehicle, you might as well try making some money back, cash back that is. Get Upside at the app is the way to do it. You can download it on the App Store or Google Play. And you can use promo code SCORE for 20 cents per gallon or more on your first fill-up cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using Get Upside. Just download the app for free and use promo code SCORE for 25 cents per gallon or more on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much to two to $300 a year and cash back, and there's no catch. The cash back gets added right back to your account. And you can cash out anytime to your bank account using PayPal or any gift card or Amazon or any other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code SCORE to get 25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank. That is promo code SCORE. <laughs> Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so the Arkansas Razorback basketball team will be facing off against Mississippi State at home uh, on Saturday, and this is kind of a game that I'm not saying I'm nervous about, but it's odd. I never, I never I, This is the first game. I'll think back to it. Arkansas is on a six-game win streak. I felt good about all those games except for on the road against LSU. But when they won that one, I felt good about all of them. I even felt good about West Virginia. Like some people didn't. I felt good about it. This, though, I just I don't feel great. Now, I know that Arkansas and Mississippi State played each other already earlier this year. First game of conference play for Arkansas. It was on the road. J.D. Note didn't play. He was out of the game. Uh, Mississippi State just handled Arkansas from beginning to end. It was not a good performance by them. And Arkansas is a completely different team right now, as we know and as we have seen. Completely different team. But Mississippi State is still 14-7, and seven, and they're still 5-3 and three in conference play, while Arkansas is 17-5, and 6-3 and three in conference play. So Arkansas will probably be favored in this game. They haven't released a line just yet. I feel like Arkansas will probably be favored by three or four points, I would assume. Uh, but it'll be pretty close. But the thing is, is that Arkansas has lost to Mississippi State five out of the last six times. Let me repeat that. Arkansas basketball has lost to Mississippi State five of the last six tries. Now, Arkansas has not been a bad basketball team in those last six tries that they've had against Mississippi State. They haven't been. In fact, they've been a really good basketball team. But when you put it like that, and... Mississippi State, who has not been a good basketball team, I think that the best they had was when Reggie Perry was there. But you take that aside, it's like, why is this team, why does Ben Howland and Mississippi State give Arkansas issues? Why have they had so much success against the Razorbacks over the past few times that they've played? And you could probably dive into it and look at different things as to why maybe this happened or this guy didn't play or you know, it was on the road, whatever it may be. But the fact is, is that of all the teams that you've played in the SEC over the past few years, Mississippi State has caused you the most problems. Like, you've beaten all these other teams at a pretty high clip. Now, now Kentucky, you know, the first time you beat them was last year after, like, a long time. So, 
you know, that's that. And, you know, you haven't beaten Florida on the road in forever, but you've beaten them at home like you beat them last year. Uh, you've had time, you have success against LSU, against Missouri, against AM, against Auburn, against Alabama. Like you've had all these like different times of success, but for some reason, Mississippi State has been that thorn in your side, has been the bane of your existence. So maybe it's a matchup, maybe it's a coaching thing, not necessarily sure, but that's why I'm kind of worried about this game. I think Arkansas is going to win. I think Arkansas is going to uh, head into Auburn or go head into the Auburn game at Bud Walton Arena on Tuesday, uh, riding a uh, eight-game winning streak. I believe that. But it just makes me nervous because Mississippi State, they do a really good job defensively. They're only uh, giving up 66 points per game. Their offense isn't bad. It's about 75 points per game they score. They shoot at a pretty high clip percentage-wise field goal. 48%, that's pretty good on the season, which is three percentage points better than Arkansas. Uh, Arkansas does rebound better. They have more assists per game. They have more blocks per game, and they actually, Mississippi State has more steals per game, which is saying something because Arkansas does a really good job. So, I don't know. I just don't like the matchup. I don't like the uh, the possibility of Mississippi State coming in to and just kill. Like, that would be such the bummer, too, is losing this game at home, knowing you got Auburn coming in, where it's going to take a little bit of the wind out of the sails. So Arkansas needs, really, really needs to win this game. But if you look at Mississippi State, and if, this is where I guess my good feelings are coming in, and I'm trying to talk myself into it. It's just my feeling says yes, but my mind says something else. But Mississippi State beat South Carolina by 14 this past week. Okay. And then Texas Tech, they got blown out by nearly 30. Texas Tech is good, but blown out by nearly 30. They lost to Kentucky on the road by 10. They did beat Ole Miss, but Ole Miss is terrible. They lost to Florida on the road. Florida's not good. They did beat Alabama by two. They beat Georgia, but they lost to Ole Miss. So they lost to Ole Miss, or they lost to Ole Miss the first time. Ole Miss beat them the second time. And they beat Arkansas. So if you're looking at just their SEC games, they really don't have any quality wins. But you'll be like, well, Arkansas didn't have any quality wins. Well, Arkansas did beat LSU on the road. It's like the only quality win that you could say that Mississippi State has is Alabama at home by two. But Alabama is not a good basketball team. Or at least they're not as good as what we thought. So if Arkansas just – if they can play with the way they did against Georgia and against West Virginia, like just play the past two games, play the way that you played in those games, both offensively and defensively, you'll win this game easily. But don't get caught looking at the other team ahead on the schedule. You know, Don't let Auburn just get in your head a little bit just because they're the number one. Take care of business in this game Saturday night. Ride that eight-game win streak into that Auburn game, and let's have some fun. Let's get crazy with it. Let's get wild with it. I really, really hope it all goes according to plan for Arkansas. I don't know. I just don't feel good. But still picking the hogs. Go with the mind instead of the gut, even though it's usually the opposite. It's a new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. It's all about getting fit, eating healthier, right? We all want to do that. Make sure Built Bar is in your plan, though. It's the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. But it might be even better than a candy bar because not only does it taste great, but it's healthy for you. It helps you stick to your New Year's resolution because it tastes so good you'll want to eat it. Unlike those other protein bars that taste like you're something like it's like bark or like a chemical spill, whatever it is. And the reason is because Bill Bar is covered in 100% real chocolate. They contain only 130 calories while also putting in 17 grams of protein. And so here's an idea for your new year. Go to your stashes where all your candy bars are at, all your snacks that are unhealthy for you. Throw them out and then replace them with Built Bar, and you won't even know the difference. The only difference you'll be able to understand and be able to see and realize is the way that you're looking because you're losing weight and at least helping maintain that weight as well. So many different flavors to choose from, and there's a great offer that if you go to Built.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15, you'll get 15% off your next order. It doesn't matter how many you order. It doesn't know how, matter how many you get, all the different flavors, whatever. Just add it to the cart. Use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your next order at Built.com. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so the final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, heading into the weekend, obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on, and I know um, you know Razorback fans are 
excited about basketball once again, which is great. And then baseball is going to be starting up, which is great as well. And I got asked about just the baseball team uh, and by somebody. I can't, and if you ask me, I'm, I apologize. I can't remember who you were on Twitter. Uh, but they wanted me to bring up the baseball team and just the accolades that they're getting in preseason as far as you know, preseason rankings, being top five, top ten, players getting All-American nods like Robert Moore and uh, Peyton Stovall's already an All-American, preseason All-American, get him. You know, Brady Slavens is getting a lot of love from people as well. Um, I think that Jalen Battles is even getting love. Like everybody is getting talked about a lot right now for Razorback baseball and on all the accolades and everything. And somebody tweeted at me, was like, so do you think that this is kind of a thing where they could be reading their own headlines? Are they kind of feeling themselves a little bit or, or whatnot? And my response to that is this. If you were a team that hadn't been there before or a team that hadn't seen expectations like this or accolades like this, Maybe, maybe you would be able to start reading your headlines and feeling yourselves a little bit more than what you should. That's absolutely a possibility. But if you're Arkansas and you're Razorback baseball and every single year you are considered to be one of the best programs in the entire country, you have the wins to go along with it, you have the pros to go along with it, you have the awards to go along with it, still mention that College World Series title, but everything else you got going on for you no, you don't read your own headlines because it's like that's the expectation. You expect to be great. You expect to have a lot of players that are going to be getting a lot of awards on your team. You expect to be picked really high in the SEC and in all of college baseball. You expect that because that's the program that you are a part of and that's a program that you've built up. So this idea that there'll ever be like these issues or that people will be scared or nervous about the expectations coming along with baseball, squash that. There, there's no, There's none of that. You, you're just that good of a program to where you don't even look at those things. And I know Dave Van Horn doesn't look at those things because he's like, hey, until we win it all, it doesn't matter. Like, that's the expectation. Great. Oh, we got, are we getting some All Americans? Okay, cool. Sweet. Oh, you're, you were preseason number one in one poll? Don't care. You were number one last year the entire season. Didn't have anything to show for it. Who cares? Rankings don't matter. None of that matters. Just going out winning matters. So that's the mentality I think Dave Van Horn has put into this baseball program. So I don't think you have to worry about any of that stuff or any of that impact on anybody else or anything like that. So I'm I'm fine with all the accolades. They're not going to read too much into it. I trust Dave Van Horn to do the right thing and to do things that he's supposed to as far as how it all goes. But either way, uh, I just I don't know. I think it'll be fine. So don't worry about that stuff. Well, appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.